Welcome to Zero to Fight Stick, this tutorial series that shows you how to build your own fight stick or arcade stick. Okay, it's time for the big day, feels like. I'm excited. It is time to get everything wired together because right now it looks pretty. It's become a mess, I know. Uh, but we need to make those connections between our PCB and our buttons and our joysticks and our Nutrix and all that good stuff. So let's tackle these one at a time and we'll try and clean up the mess later. All right, so right now I took off the ribbon cable from the unifier board connected to the retro just because we want to start with uh, the big mess, I think, is our 20 pin cable. And again, I've sleeved most of my cables, so there's that. Um, we're going to turn this around. Now the joystick lead is on the bottom in my orientation, but it might be different for you, so just check your, the way you're going to do that. And we connect that to JP2 on the board here. Now once you line it up, be very careful. You don't want to bend pins or anything like that. Just kind of work it on. And then there we go. So you're going to apply a moderate amount of pressure. Just you know, be mindful, be careful. We don't want to break those pins or anything like that. Uh, the way I found this will work is if you kind of flop this around and then work your ribbon cable around. The joystick ribbon cable or cable here will uh, slot underneath. It seems to you know, cooperate a little bit more, but I just couldn't get it the other way. So then we just connect that. I'm just double checking and we're good. All right, so there's that. All right, what's next? Well, we might as well put this other big mess in here and this is our lighting panel. I uh, put some the soft velcro on the bottom here, just kind of stuck it on. Uh, it's not 100% yet. I'm going to battle test this and see, and you know, I'll update the blog if I need to change the mounting solution. But this has a few cables to connect, so I'm going to just put them outside, slide it in, and push down. Hey, that's okay. That'll work. All right. What else do we have to connect? All right. This is our L3, oops, L3, R3 touchpad. And I really suggest you make a cheat sheet for what goes where, as, where, as well as wiring and such. So this goes into J10 on the retro. And we're just gonna kind of nudge that under the ribbon cable. Actually, let's pull the ribbon cable off. I'm feeling paranoid. There we go. You want to get that in to hear the lock engage or see it engage, one of the two. And then, what other cables do we have? Oh, yes. This is our retro UFB toggle switch. So red pin is going to go on pin one here. The right like so. Black will align to that ground as it's labeled. And let's kind of slide this underneath the other guy. that flopping for now. Nope. There it is. It took a dive. Okay. This is a pretty long cable for going such a short run. We'll bundle it up later. Uh, this is our directional pad, left stick, right stick toggle. And that goes on the uh, J3 here. Now I point the red towards me on this instance. So red at the top, and there we go. Okay, now, when you get our turbo lead over here, as well as our LED array, and that goes, the turbo goes into J6, which is right next to this other four pin. 
told you this would turn messy really fast. Even with the cable wrap making things, you know, kind of pretty. Well, I guess, you know, as I've recommended many, many times here, take your time. It's really easy to snap something, break something, and you'll be really sad and out a lot of money. No one wants that. All right, there is our other lead here. Let's thread this through. This is our five pin LED connection. Man, I hope this works. <laughs> and there we go. One, two, three there. We can hook our ribbon cable back in. If we can get it to nudge under, it's really finicky. I might have to do this, yeah. Okay. There's one other thing I'm gonna do here is the v, the power and the ground for the extra power on the magenta. Um, you need your mini screwdriver for this, but you wanna look at the square hole on the bottom of the blue array here. The first, the red pin or wire goes into here and then just screw it down. You should feel it, if you're holding on to the red wire, you should feel it bite in a little bit. You don't have to go super far. And then we need to count off one, two, three, four, five, six. So with this ground pin right here, I'm gonna slot that in, bolt it in. And that's pretty much all the connections we have to our retro board. Man, that thing's gonna be <laughs> awesome. All right, the other things we can do. Uh, I don't want to start with that one. Yeah, this one. Oops. And again, I hope you've made a cheat sheet for what wire color is what, especially for the 20 pin, because that's going to be fun. All right. I want to connect the USB. Let's see if I can slot it in there. Yeah, I can, I can work it in there. It's going to be oops, the other way. It's always the other way, isn't it? It doesn't matter which kind of USB, except for maybe C, and even then, there's people that are saying, oh, sometimes if I put it in one way, it doesn't work, but if I do it the other, it's fine. Ah. Well, anyway, you want to get your USB connected down on that uh, UFB. It's not totally necessary. If you're just running the retro connected to it, you can run it all over RJ45, but I'm doing it because if I want a firmware update, I just want to plug into here and say, okay, that's good. I don't want to have to reach in there or finagle the cables again. If I can help it, I never want to have to open the pot this case just to save me some headaches. Okay. Um, we can do the opposite though, so I know this port is that, I know this guy is RJ45, you all look probably looking at me like that's on the opposite side, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, and this goes to our magenta lead, okay, so those will connect where they need to go. Now, you can make this nice by kind of threading it under, but I'm just going to show you. There, there you go. Let's connect that end. And this will go over here. And once I work it under there, it'll slot into the UFB. All right, that's part one of cabling. Let me stop here and come back in a second to show you individual cabling ends. here we are again and I've done some some wire threading it's still a mess of course it's going to be a mess with this many wires but let's get started on how to connect things so let's start with our joystick now you're gonna have this cable I do plan to get it spiral wrapped uh, but that'll be later we're just gonna run that and you'll notice on it there's a tab top and a you know there's you can see the pins here for this guy, you want the tab top to be on top because that black wire is going to match to the little triangle pin. So 
So all we do, wiggle that on just ever so slightly. There we go. Remember, keep that force in <laughs> moderated because it can really screw you up. All right, the other pin we need to connect here is CN3. So this power lead that comes, we connected, is just going to come over here and slot in. Now the default cable that you get from Paradise is going to have a three pin JP, JST connector on it. You're going to have, for the retro board or the whatever brook board you use, you're going to have to strip that off and plug into here. Okay, and then to, let's connect our C, to CN4 on our four pin here. That's our mode button and our LED. And of course it wants to be obstinate. Here we go. There we go. It's going, it's going ever so slowly. Ooh, almost didn't take my own advice there and bend it out of shape. Okay, so we're in there. We should have our LED connected now. We just need to connect our mode button. Now for buttons. I'm gonna just, you can connect, there's not really a set pin for ground and signal, uh, but I'm going to be using the left side, my left side for ground and the other side for signal. So, all these guys, now, I don't think the Paradise one ships with these. I put these on after the fact, but if you have the plastic jackets on or nylon or whatever they are, uh, it's kind of easier just to slide them down a bit. And it, this is hard to see on this angle, I know, and I'll show it again in when we're wiring the main buttons. You just want to wiggle that on until it's kind of flush as much as possible, then slide the cover back on. Easy. And covers on. All right, and that's everything we need for the magenta. Uh, I know I'd made the tutorial video about using the siren. Uh, if you have the siren, this is already going to be connected. Uh, you won't be able to connect a mode light, I don't think. You'll just connect, you can connect the external button I don't have the full details on the siren. They didn't ship with any documentation. But anyhow, uh, with just the link base and a standard Magenta, this is how you're going to wire it up. All right, I'm going to pause there for a second. Oh, almost forgot one last connection on the Paradise is the USB. So we're just to the Nutric Pastor I have for it. Of course, it's always the other side. There we go. Joystick now is really, really, really fully connected. So I may want to redo the wire here, the slot. Oh, that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. There you go. Let's connect our turbo button. So it's the same idea. We're just going to slide covers back if we can. And since I made this wire I'm a little worried it's not. It could come loose at any time. Just I have that much confidence. Alright, there we go. Just use a little needle nose if you need it. We'll do the same for the other guy. Come on. There we go. And again, I connect signal on my right. We'll pretend we got that. And ground on the other side. All the push button does is complete a circuit when it's pushed in. It gives a signal that, yeah, hey, do this thing. So there's that. And we already have the LED connected, so we're good to go there. Okay, 
let's talk about connecting your L3, R3, and touchpad buttons. The harness, or that's connected to J10, and you're gonna have harness, if you bought it from pre-made, uh, it comes with a ground wire, it comes with green wire, red wire, blue wire. Uh, touchpad connects to red, L3 connects to green, and L3 connects to blue. So what I would do is connect our ground wire first, and then it's just like the other option buttons we that I've discussed. Uh, just wire this, I'm wiring it to my left post, and then connect the respective button to the wire there. It's going to be kind of hard to record, so I'm just going to do it and maybe show you a final product. Back in a bit. Okay, we're back, and those L those three buttons are connected. I know it's probably hard to see. There's just not really good, good light in here for that. Um, but there we go. They sound beautiful, and they're wired up. All right, so let's cover some of our other buttons. All right, let's talk about the tournament lockout. And this is a little tricky. Um, first of all, remember that converter lead we made a long time ago? It's time to finally use it. So, what we're going to do is, uh, hopefully you guys can see it, but this switch here is going to be what we're using for tournament lockout. When the LED, it's not going to light up, unfortunately. I'm sure there's a way to do it. I just, I haven't done it. Anyway, pin one. Pin 2 and pin 3 right there. We want to make red on pin 1. Slide that cover on. I should have done that. This middle wire I used is a little fussier, so I'm going to connect that first. There we go. These other two a bit more flexible, thankfully. Come on. There we go. All right, now we have our converter. What we're going to need is this tournament lockout harness. You can, again, make your own. Uh, we don't even need all these pins. I mean, there's so many. Uh, this is something that AFS sells, sells excuse me, and we're gonna wire that in. But first, I need to get some things together, so we'll be right back. Okay, let's continue the wiring the tournament lockout switch. Now, I took that really long, ugly thing that you get sent and just trimmed it down to four leads and connected to the red wire of our converter. So we have three left, you can wire these in any order, it doesn't matter. The, for the other two leads, all you need, and make sure you slide up the little plastic cover we made ourselves earlier. For the other two leads, we just want to connect two of these to the other two pins. And that's not too hard. Slide this back a bit so I get the clearance. Satisfying snap. It's very faint, but you'll feel it. That one was a little louder. Okay. Now all we have to do is connect these three, and when this switch is set to this position, your start select guide will be turned off. You can't use them. Turn, flip that back on, and you can. Fortunately, again, that LED is not going to light up. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do it. I just haven't figured out how. That said, happy logging out of your tournaments, and we'll go on to our next wiring bit here in a sec. Let's talk about start, select, and your guide, home, whatever button. Uh, wiring these is just like wiring your, uh, these guys here, they're just more option button wiring. You have pretty much the same setup. You will have a ground wire, but don't connect this yet. Because we have the tournament lockout, we don't want to wire this directly to the buttons. All right. the. Gray cord is going to be for your guide button, your home, whatever. 
white is going to be for start, red is for select. So all we'll do is get the, these three positive leads connected and I'll talk about the tournament lockout afterwards. All right, see you in a bit. Next up is our middle switch, which controls directional pad, left stick, right stick, which one you're going to be using when you use your joystick. Now, this connects to J3, we've connected it already, and it looks like it has four wires, but when it comes out, huh, that's weird, it only has three. That's fine. Now, the cable we got, it's pre-made, it's a little long, so probably want to zip strip it a little bit later. We'll do wire cleanup in a future segment. Um, but what I'd say is connect your red wire to the first pin. Whoop. I guess I haven't bolted that down enough. Anyway, I'm getting camera jitters, obviously. And then blue pin is going to go to your center, and then black pin to the one furthest, you know, back one here. Obviously the one left. Uh, once you've got that, you can Leave it in the center switch for your standard directional pad. Toggle it forward for left. Toggle it backward for right. All right, we'll see you back here in a bit. Let's talk about wiring some action buttons. And I feel like Kung Fury should be playing in the background because I need some action like a true survivor. All right, the harness is that I bought from Arcade Shock that come with the Universal Modding Kit, uh, 20 pins. They come in, we bundled it up earlier. If you didn't do that, that's fine. They do come zip tied kind of together. Uh, but you'll notice that, hey, this blue guy's really short, this red guy comes next, gray, and then purple's really long. So that makes it easier to know, okay, what button goes where. And this color set is the punch button, so first light punch medium, heavy, and then uh, whatever this guy is. So let's get started with that. All you do is, it's just like option buttons, you're going to see it now. I'm using that side pretty consistently, and you can use really either, but I'd be consistent and keep it like that. All right, then our gray one, then purple, Easy peasy. All right, let's get our other bundle and we'll start with orange. Our kick row. There we go. Then we've got yellow. I'm going to slide under our other bundle. There we go. Sometimes the jacket will slide forward more than you want just move it back if you need to no problem there we go and green and just make sure the jacket's back on if you move it back or out of the way or whatnot and there we go we can kind of fold these over or whatnot but you notice they all have second layer pins and we have this guy what you're going to do is just daisy chain this ground. So we'll start from the bottom since I made that really short, but that's okay. And then up to here, up to here, down to here, rather. Back up to here. You may need to yeah, nudge that out of the way. Come on. Okay. These are going on fairly easily. I was having some fuss and fits with the switches and whatnot, but now we're, we're all good, all good. Everything's good here. How are you doing? That's a Star Wars reference. You're welcome. This last one wants to have its jacket a little too far forward. And there we go. There's your action buttons. Easy. Just plug and play, and you're ready to go. Now, if you plug this in and start testing you find out oh no my buttons aren't lighting up and whatever um, there's can be a couple sources for this one 
you know, maybe you have a pin connection that's not all the way down. Make sure these are all seated. Make sure your 20 pin is plugged in where it needs to be. Make sure this is connected and we're all firm there. Another reason can be we, you didn't push in the switches inside the gamer fingers or you know, whatever switch you're using if you're using a Cherry MX based housing there. Uh, just make sure they're slotted all the way in. If you, uh, hopefully you bought plate mount switches, those fit a little better. Uh, the PCB you ha you do have to convert as we've mentioned before, or as I've mentioned before. There's no we here. Uh, and if you still find the PCB aren't working, you might want to just file down that spot where the pin was cut, and you'll be set to go. All right, we are almost done. I'm super excited. I just need to fix one last thing, and we'll be back. We'll talk about the retro UFB switch. So if you want to use your retro, you'll flip it one way. You want to use the UFB, you'll flip it another. Um, and this one does light up. I'm excited. See you in a bit. The final wire, the final piece. Oh my gosh, I'm super excited. I was a little scared because the connector here was had some loose pins, but I was able to rescue it so we don't have to spend another two hours making a new one. All right, our last switch is, like I said, it's going to toggle between the retro and the UFB. So let's see. Because this switch is reversed, the pins are three, two, one, three being furthest to one. So what we're going to do is black is going to be the first one on. And make sure you hold the other side of that switch. It can have a, it's still possible for it to just pop out and ruin your day. All right, there's one. Green is in the middle. Finally, our last connection. This is it. There we go. Now let's just kind of tuck that wire. And there she is. If this works, I'll be super, super duper happy. But uh, there we go. You've just gone from zero to fight stick. And I hope you've learned something along the way. I hope you've had fun wiring this. If you're like me, you got frustrated sometimes, you broke things, you made mistakes, but hey, that's part of the process. And I feel like I've learned a lot about electronics and just making new connectors. I've worked with connectors in the past, uh, with computers and such, but actually making them, that's a whole different project. So stay tuned. We may do some wire cleanup and fuss around with things a little bit, but otherwise we're good to go. And if you followed along and you are there's little bits and pieces you took from this series, you know, you know, again, leave a comment, like, subscribe, hope you enjoyed it, and see you around.